So Father God, we just come in the name of Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We thank you for uh, your providence. We thank you, Lord God, for Yeshua, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you for power and might. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you, Lord God, for ability to pray and to be heard for you say you incline your ears to the prayers of the righteous and God on tonight we thank you Lord God that you will continue to teach us that there is a precise biblical view in which we can live our life through that view make our choices through that view love people through that view and and do what needs to be done through that view God we just thankful that Yeshua came and he died but we're more thankful that he rose again for our justification. God, I thank you, Lord God, for being Yahweh and Elohim, the creator and the ruler of the universe. I thank you for everything, God, that you're doing in our life. I thank you for a new season of life, God, 56 year, 56 season, God. I thank you, Lord God, that it will be used for your glory. I just thank you that we are all maturing in the things of God, and I am so grateful that you'll take us from faith to faith and from glory to glory. God, have your own way in this place on tonight. All that are not here, bless them, bless their households. In the magnificent name of Yeshua, King of King, Lord of Lords, the Messiah, coming King, we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. God is an awesome God. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise, everybody. Amen. He's an awesome God. As I said, I experienced my 56th birthday on, on uh, Sunday, uh, 56 years old on Sunday, I was excited. It was awesome how God deals with us, knowing us and know how we click and how we, how we roll. God knows us, you know, from the inside out. So I woke up and the, the word domination came to my mind, domination. So I'm thinking about, I look at my life in terms of seasons. It's a new season and I thought about domination. So soon as I thought about the word domination, uh, being a football, ex-football player and a lover of the sport, the name Lawrence Taylor came to my mind. Lawrence Taylor was a dominating football player. He dominated the field. I mean, he, he was one man that could almost play 11 men by himself. And so what does that look like in, 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 in the spirit realm to be a dominator? It looks like what God said that he created us to do. He said to have dominion. Amen. So this year, I want to set in on that for myself. And this being a season of domination, dominating my feelings, dominating things that are not of God for my life. Yes, me, you, we all have things that have been in our life that have actually, if we're not dominating it, it's probably dominating us. There's no even ground. Jesus says you're either with me or you are against me. We're either living and walking out his will and his purposes or either we're not. So when I woke up on Sunday morning and that revelation came to me about being a season of domination in my life and personalizing it, personalizing this year in my life as a year that I, I will walk not by the sight of my eyes or reproved by the hearing of my ears, but be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Two words came to my mind, prayer and Holy Spirit for, for this year. And I said, prayer and Holy Spirit. I got to thinking about the scripture said, ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be open. I look at those three words, ask, seek, and knock. And what do those words start with? One starts with an A, right? One starts with an S, the other one starts with a K. So ask and seek and knock, they all spell, if you take the first letter, ask. And it's powerful, it's all asking, it's all asking. You know, I've understand that over the years, I've learned to pray my problems. It's praying the promise. I've prayed the problem more than I prayed the promise. I've prayed what's going on wrong in my life, what's going on wrong in my family, what's going on in my relationships, what's going wrong. I've prayed the problem and I have not consistently prayed the promise. So I'm moving from that, from that defeated ram set and mindset of a defeated person to pray the problem and God, I know you're strong and you're mighty. Take care of this problem with me to, to pray in the promise. God, you've already taken care of it. You've already saved my family. You've already healed my body. You've already, so I'm going on the office, y'all. We're going on the, on the office this year. And in order to do that, we need balance in our life. 
We, we need balance in our life. The Bible says a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, a false balance. And when I think about that word worldview, it's how you perceive the world. It's your perception of the world. We all need a biblical worldview. If we all get a biblical worldview, that a zero is all in. And now we don't look like we're all over the place as people of God who are supposed to be the most um, um, powerful people on the earth. I believe the church should be possessing the power. I think we should be known for our power. I don't think we should just be known for our intellect and for our knowledge of the scriptures. We should, no doubt about it, because if we know no information, no transformation, but I believe that we should be some of the most powerful people on this earth. And we shouldn't just be in power and laying on hands and, 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 and being filled with the Holy Ghost, but being communicators of God's transforming grace. I think that that's the call of God. That's the most powerful person in the world is a person who is a communicator of God's transforming grace, meaning that you have a message, you have knowledge, you have some in, in, in insight on something that will change an individual's life, take them out of darkness into the marvelous light. You have that. You are a, trans, you are a communicator of God's transforming grace. You are. You have a treasure in earthen vessels. But if I don't see myself the way that God wants me to see myself, the way that he made me, if I don't see God as he is, the only true and living God, if I don't see man created in God's image, if I don't see the problem of this world, that being of sin, if I don't see the antidote or the prescription to fix it as repentance and salvation, then everything else don't even matter. It's powerful, y'all powerful real real powerful when you begin to look at the bible i'm reading the bible now all over again praise god we were in louisiana and we realized that these 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 brothers and sisters in christ been down there reading the bible for three straight years they've been through the bible and the grace of god is down there underneath that tent i thank god for it because they have a biblical worldview how can you go through the bible two times and on the third time on the third year and not have a biblical worldview unless you are on missing it on purpose <laughs> you have to miss it on purpose sometimes we miss it on purpose so um back to what i was saying I, I got up sunday morning and i told you the word domination came to my mind i thought about uh domination i thought about number 56 being my birthday season thought about lawrence taylor being a dominating linebacker dominating the forces but god told me it's time for you to put on the whole arm of god and dominated the forces of evil Put on the whole armor so that you can stand against the wild of the devil. So I got up. I went to I went to 24-hour fitness. That's what I did on my birthday morning. First at, 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 at 7 o'clock, uh, my nephew and I at 7, 8 o'clock went to 24-hour to, uh, fitness, worked out, spoke with a couple people there about Yeshua, my testimony, powerful. Left there, got showered up, went to Victory Outreach Church, conquered. Victory Outreach is a powerful ministry. And it was started um, years ago, and they had um, Isaiah 45 and Isaiah 54 in mind for, for their vision statement, and they're powerful. They, God going to give you the treasures of, 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 of hidden places and things like that, but it was, it's, it's a soul winning church, and they're a deliverance church, and, and, and it's, a, a, it's, it's, it's just a, a powerful Latino church that's built. They have a, a, a victory outreach all over the place, so I went there. And I had this, this thing, domination on my mind. So when I got there, they said moving from ordinary to extraordinary. That was a sermon topic. Moving from ordinary to extraordinary. Praise God. And, and, and that went right in line with, with domination. So um, what else did I do? We, we, we had dinner right at the house. My nephew, Ryan, his girlfriend, Charmaine, and little nephew, my little nephew, great nephew, Rain. We sat there and... Uh, we had dinner right at the table. And then we capped it off with the Gold State Warriors game. Went to the game, Chase Center. Always wanted to go to the Chase Center and see Steph. And he had 30 at halftime. He killed them and it was good seats and it was good fellowship. We sat around some great people. So I'm grateful to God. I want to thank everybody who wished me a happy birthday. Those that that, that, that on Facebook wished a happy birthday and, and um, text me and said happy birthday and praying for my hip. and different things. I, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, because I'm never really mean to miss anybody and by saying thank you, but thank everybody. Praise God. But this is a season not only for domination in my life, this is a season for domination in your life.
Praise God. I mean, dominating your fears, dominating the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches, dominating the evil thoughts and suggestions of the enemy against your mind and against what's going on in your life. It's time that we step up and be exactly what God has created us to be. Amen. Amen. I went to a uh, Hall of Fame induction of one of my close friends on Friday night. It was awesome. Uh, it was at Chabot Junior College where I used to go and brought back so many memories, but I can't lie. All I sat there and thought about was my brother, the whole ceremony. I thought about him being at that school. When I was at that school, he was alive. When I was at that school, we were both living in California. And when I was at, at that school, he would make every game. He never missed my home games at that, at that school. So it was a bitter, sweet moment. You know, I sat there and thought about him, but I seen him smiling down on me. I'm seeing him just smiling and say, keep going, Ronnie. You, you're where you need to be. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing in Christ. I'm, I'm cheering. I'm a part of the witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses and, and cheering you on. Amen. Amen. But that's enough. For me. I just want to get that out of the way. I'm grateful for another year. Uh, four years ago, they didn't think I lived two years and I'm here and it's four years and I'm going to be here until I'm not here. Right. I'm, I'm going I'm to serve God till I can't. Praise God, because he's an awesome God. He's been so good to not only me, but he's been good to you and your whole household. He has been good. Amen. Through the trials and through the storms. Somebody say he's been good. He's been good. Praise God. You know, we talked about those four fundamental questions. Who am I? Why am I here? What's wrong with the world? Uh, how can what's, what's wrong be, be made right? And we talked about those things. We talked about how we're an individual. Uh, we're made in the image of God. Um, and, and we're the crowning glory of, it, of, 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 of his creation. We are the crowning glory. When you look at just starting off with that worldview, knowing who you are, uh, why you're here, we're here to give glory to God. We were purpose to give glory to God. The Bible said, what is man? That, that, that we'd be, we'd be a little mindful of him and that he would make him a little lower than the angels and he would crown him. We are his crowning glory. We are his crowning glory. So look, let's change that worldview. Not to, I'm left behind, I'm the outcast. No, I am an individual created in God's image and I am his crowning glory. Not only that, why am I here? I'm here to bring glory to God. You're here to bring glory. What's wrong with the world? What's wrong with the world in your personal worldview is when you're not bringing glory to God. When you're not bringing glory to God because you're here to bring glory to God. So when I'm not, bringing glory to God. That's what's wrong with my world. We think everything else is wrong with the world. No, if you're bringing glory to God and walking according to your manufactured specification in those things that God has called you to do and you're operating in your gift that God has given you and you are doing it to the best of your broken ability, praise God. You, 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 the world don't look as messed up as it looks. Because God has given you a task and enough work to do to keep you busy from the time you realize your gift to the time you check out of here. If you get busy about doing what God has purposed you to do and you say in the morning, I want to glorify you, God. That's all I want to do today is bring you glory today. So why bring him glory? What's wrong? When I cease to bring God's glory, that's wrong. But how can I fix what's, what's been wrong, what's been made wrong? I repent and turn back to God. Amen. So we talked about that um, last week. We talked about creation. We talked about the fall. We talked about um, redemption. And we talked about the consummation of, of everything. When God comes back and he, he redeems this world, we were created. God created all things, both seen and unseen, according to Colossians 1 and 16. I'm just running through this because I'm trying to get to where I'm going. And then uh, God said everything was good. When God made everything, he said it was good. So I've been reading Genesis and I've been doing a lot of studying in the book of Genesis. And we're talking about the fossil record versus the biblical record. Amen. And they're saying this world is millions and millions of years old. They said a lot of stuff pre-existed before Adam and Eve, which, which means God was saying that fossils and cancer and tumors and fossils were good. If we had that worldview, if we got a fossil record, Amen. And then God and Adam and Eve came after the fossils and dinosaurs. And God said everything that he made was good. We're saying that God called cancer, fossils, and everything else good. And no, God didn't call all that good because all that is not good. All that happened after the fall of man. Come on, y'all. Let's get the right biblical worldview. Let's tap in to the mind of God and see that it was God, Elohim, who is the creator and the ruler of this universe. 
I heard Tony Evans say this. He said this the other day. If you want to run your own world, go make one. God is in, God is in charge of this one. If you want to run your own world, go make one. God is in charge of this one. How many, how, how many have learned that the hard way? We thought we was running something, but we weren't running nothing. God, God, God running this, y'all. Whether you know it or not, if you've been called of God, you're going to answer the call too because Jesus said, all that the Father has given me shall come and I'll know why it's cast him out. God is in control of this world. He knows where all the water is and all the lakes. He knows how much blood is in your body. He knows every red blood cell, every white blood cell. God is everything. He's all knowing. He's everywhere at the same time. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He, 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 he's, he's immutable. He never, ever changes. You know what? We change all the time. God never changed. He said, I'm the Lord, not God. I change not. Amen. So mankind ruined that perfect relationship. How did mankind ruin that perfect relationship? By sinning, by disobeying God. Rebelliousness. We were in Louisiana. We, Louisiana, and we were, we, I seen the consistent thread of all the parents, all the people seek God, everybody that want to be empowered by God, to be used by God. They, they, they problem in what they were dealing with, and it wasn't a problem, but it was their concern, was their children. Their children, some walking away from the Lord. Their children not living for the Lord. Wow. If we got a worldview and if we got a God biblical worldview, who's in charge of this world? God. Who's in charge of that child or that son or that daughter that I'm worried about? God. So we can walk in our divine purpose and let God take care of what we're concerned about. But if we don't have that right biblical worldview, then we're worried and concerned about stuff that we shouldn't be concerned about. Man damaged that. Man damaged that by disobeying so when you find a problem in your life research the problem and find the root of the problem and not worry about the fruit of the problem what started me to act in the way that i'm acting praise god why is this problem exploded and come to this place where it is because i might have had something to do to contribute to the demise of where i'm at in my life right now i didn't react the right way i didn't respond in a godly way now it is blown up right in front of my face but if i go back i should have said what god said and i shouldn't have said what i felt and if i'd have said that at least even if the problem still exists i still would be free i still would be free of being a contributor to it being what it is Boy, that's good. I thank you, God. Yeah. So God, he, he promised redemption. After that, he told Abraham, he said, come here, I want you to leave your, 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 your family. I want you to leave your kindreds. I want you to leave and I'm going to show you a place. Abraham took off. That was election. He elected him out of Ur of Chaldean, a that, that idol worship. He chose him. That's powerful. God chose you too. Out of a world system out of a culture of sin and iniquity, he chose you. We are way more powerful than, than we give God credit for. We are way more powerful than we give God credit for. Amen. So he promised that, and, and then God sent his son, Jesus Christ. He sent him, and he died on the cross. And then we realize that God has appointed a day when Christ is going to come back again. Amen? He's coming again. So when you don't have a biblical view, you know, you, you err on, on a few of these positions. You take a different stance on some of these things. But today we're gonna look like, we're gonna look at this five-fold breakdown. We're gonna look at a breakdown. God first. We're gonna look at God, we're gonna look at man, we're gonna look at truth, we're gonna look at knowledge, and we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at ethics. Praise God, we're gonna look at God. We're gonna look at God. Talking to young people in California, talking to people at the camp, meeting in Louisiana that's been reading the Bible for two years, going on three, well, three years, I mean, to say they did a three-year um, three uh, anniversary. And just listening to them solve problems, it's, it's, it's funny, though, I want you to get this. Biblically, we know how to solve it. How come it's not being solved? Wow, what a question. Biblically, I know how to solve it. How come it's not being solved? Right? Because we're trying to solve a problem with a biblical worldview, and the problem does not have a biblical worldview. So how can you get the non-biblical worldview to come in concert with the biblical worldview? So the task is, let's go back and let's redo this thing and let's unravel all this that we've, we, we, we see how they're acting, what they're doing, where they're going, 
and let's go back to the starting blocks, right? People run track, spend a lot of time in the starting blocks because it's very important. You can't get out the blocks too quick because if you get out the blocks too quick, you disqualify and you come, can't come out too late come out the blocks too late, you're going to lose the race because if somebody's quicker than you, you can't win. So you have to come out when the gun fire. How did the gun fire in the beginning? I created the heavens and the earth. That's how the gun fire. Pow, that was the starting place. If you think about anything else other than pow in the beginning, God, evolution, naturalism. If you think about atheism, if you think about Dar Darwinism, Marxism, if you think about all those isms as the beginning of how it started, you messed up. Wow, it's good. So I'm dealing with children all the time. So God is empowering me that now all of us got kids, whether they're our kids, nephews, nieces, step kids, whatever the case may be. We got to start back with the gun, God. We got to go back to God, you know, because we asking a God to fix stuff that we don't really know. Paul dealt with this in Acts chapter 17. He said, I beheld your prescription or your inscription to an unknown God who you ignorantly worship. He said, let me describe him to you. Let me tell you who he is. Let me tell you this God who created the earth and everything. And he's established your inhabitants. Where are you going to live? You're going to live over here. You're going to live over here. He said that God is not hard to find because he's everywhere. So we got to go back to the beginning, y'all, to base and find out our worldview. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's back with God. Who is God? Let's go to Deuteronomy. Chapter, we'll go to King James Version today. Deuteronomy. Where am I at? King James. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Hmm, there's only one true and living God, period. It's not up for uh, negotiation. And this same God is the same. He never changes, right? He eternally existed. He eternally existed how? In three people, in the Father and in the Son, in other Holy Spirit. So we got God. Oh, hear Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's one Lord. Let's look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. He said, there you go, go ye therefore, there, go therefore, this is the English standard version, and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of, of the Holy and Holy Spirit. Amen. So you got three unique eternal people in one the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what is man? We talked about it again. God made man in his image. We're going to look at that again, Ephesians chapter 1, I mean, Genesis chapter 1. Amen, Genesis chapter 1. Let's go down to verse uh, 26. Yeah. Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and over the heavens and over the lively stock. Uh, this is the Eastern, Eastern Standard. Well, I got so many standards going on. Heavenly and over the lively stock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created him male and female, he created them and God blessed them. And God said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and over the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the earth, face of this earth and every tree with the seed in its fruit, ye shall have them for food. So really he said, gave us a vegetarian. He gave us a vegan diet right there. That's what we eat. Do you see, you say anything about pork chop in there? He don't say nothing about, about a chicken wing. He don't say nothing about a turkey leg. He don't say nothing. He said he gave us these seeds, right? And to every beast, remember this, after the flood, after the fall in the, and, and it fall in the garden, in Genesis chapter nine and verse three, he ends up telling us that we can eat meat now. 
Praise God. So it was after the fall that God said we could eat meat. Praise God. That's when a lion can attack another lion for food or an impala or whatever. And every beast of the earth and every bird of the heavens to everything that creepers on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So we, we find out that God made everything in his image. He called everything good. And then he, he gave us dominion over it. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord took man and put him in, it, in, in the garden of Eden to work and to keep it. We're supposed to keep the land. Originally, we were supposed to keep it. We are supposed to till the ground. Amen. God kept us as keepers of the earth. Am I my brother's keeper? We realize after the after 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 the sin, we find the first murder. So now God never retracted what he had told man to reproduce, but now they began to reduce reproduce after their rebellious people. They reproduce. And I can't kill his brother Abel. So if we go all the way back to the beginning. And we find out that we have this inherent behavior before we are born again. That's why Jesus said it's imperative that you be born again. Unless a man is born again spiritually, your second birth, not go back in your mother's womb, but to be born of the spirit and of the water. Amen. You, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot even perceive the kingdom of God. So what is truth, though? Because we know what God is. We know that the Lord, thy God, it, it's only one of him, right? We know he's eternally existing in three people, right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy, and the Holy Spirit. We understand that God made man and we are his crowning glory. A lot of us want to get to the deeper things of God. How can we walk in this, this anointing and how can we break this off and how can we curse this? And how can if we don't know this, we can't do none of that. And yeah, that's the bottom. I'm gonna be bold as I possibly can be this 56 season. If we don't know who the real God is and that he never changes, the same thing he hated in the garden is the same thing he hates today. Same thing he loved then is the same thing he loved now. Amen. God is the same, right? The man is the same. We're still created. And, 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 and God, after we're born again and we go back, so so God had a ram in the bush even before this thing went down. He knew that there was a lamb slain before the foundation of this earth. All those that were elected in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the earth, we at some point, we're sitting in church now, we're saved, right? Because God had figured this thing out already. So now us as Christians, and that's what I'm driving this home to tonight, we are special in this earth. We have been made to dominate the situations in life that come about. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's because we know who God is, because we know who we are. The more you find out about God, the more you find out about yourself. Amen. The more you find out about God, the more you find out about yourself. The more you're not like God, the more things are going to look like they're out of, out of, out of space. They're going to look like they're, they're out of focus. Things aren't right. The more we're not like God, the more we're like God, the more things will work out like God want them to work out. What is truth? What is truth it, with a biblical worldview? Anybody know what is truth? It's absolute and it's never changing. It's absolute and it never changes because that's a biblical worldview, a counterfeit worldview, or I call it a knockoff worldview. Your emotions is truth. Our emotions is truth. I can't say nothing to hurt him. Now, if you're intentionally saying something to hurt him, amen, if you're intentionally saying something to hurt her, then you're wrong. You need to repent. But if you're speaking the word of God in love and the Holy Spirit convicts that person, then you did what you were supposed to do. And the Holy Ghost did what it was supposed to do, too. So if you caught in your feelings and your worldview is Ronnie don't have my best interest at hand, Sister Ramona doesn't have, Sister Swanson doesn't have my best interest at hand, you're going to think that they jumping on you. You came to them with a problem. They gave you a biblical solution. You couldn't stand it in your feelings because your emotions is your truth. It don't feel right. 
It, it, it don't it don't feel it don't feel like you coming down on me. No, this brother love you and he wants you to see you operate like God wants you to operate in your kingdom authority. He don't want you always walking around on the defense and always no, I didn't do this, I didn't do no, yes, I did it all. But look what Christ did, it covered it all. We always try to defend ourselves. Praise God, Christ is our defense. When we do wrong, repent. I'm sorry, I was wrong, out of line, wrong worldview, wrong choice, wrong consequence. I take it. God, forgive me. Let's get back at it. Amen. What's the truth? It's absolute. It never changes. Let's look at Psalms 119. Psalms 119 and 160. If you ever want to know about the word of God, and the love for the word of God, you look at Psalm 116. He said, the sum of your word is truth. That means every jot and every tittle. The sum of your word is true because we got to discover what is God. We know he's God and he's only one. He's the true God. We got to know what man is. We're individuals created in God's image. But we got to know what truth is too. Because if your feelings are your truth, your feelings are, your truth is not the truth. <laughs> the sum of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous rules endure forever. God's word is true. Every sum of it and all of it will stay the same and it will never change. How long? Forever. It is absolute. I told you it's against, it's, it's, it's not based on your opinion or my opinion, right? That being objective. Objective means it don't matter what Brother Devin say. It doesn't matter what Brother Tom say. The Bible say, what if some don't believe? Will it make the faith of God to none effect? God forbid, let God be true and let every man be a liar. So truth don't change with circumstances. Truth don't change with time. Truth don't change with people. People, truth don't change because who looks the most godly? Truth is always the truth. It's always universal. It's always good here. It's always good there. It's always good everywhere. That right, man. It's always good here. It's always good there. It's always good everywhere. The truth. Amen. It is. The Bible said, where can I hide from you? If I go to hell, you down there. If I go to heaven, you up there. No, that's right. You, you can't hide from it. It's everywhere. It's universal. And then it's constant. It's been here before you were here. In the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. It's going to be here when we leave. That's absolute truth. Nothing else fits those three criteria. That's why the Bible says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So let's get our truth down, y'all. Let's get our, get our truth down. Truth is, is unchanging. It's a source of God himself. What do you mean? Go to John 14 and 6. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. I am the way. The Bible says there's, there's many ways. The Bible says there's a way that seems right, but the end thereof is death. There's many ways. The Bible says in Jeremiah, put me in the way and ask for the old path. And when I give you the old path, walk in it. But they said, no. Everybody want a new path. Everybody want a new cart. You know what happens when we get a new cart? When we try to carry the presence of God on unqualified shoulders, somebody get killed. They try to carry the Ark of the Covenant, made a new cart, and the Ark fell. The man grabbed it. He got killed because we had something that had not been tried and tested. Word of God, y'all, let's try the word. Try the spirit. Whether it be of God, it says. Try the spirit, whether it be of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord is in the right, is in the right, is in the right ballpark. Amen. That's what the scripture said. I am. I am represents the ever present presence of God. I am the ever present presence of God. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No one come to the Father except through me. How many believe that? So, so the word of God is true. It, 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 it sources God himself. The source is God himself. God is truth. The Bible said Jesus Christ came, right? 
He came, he was full of grace and full of what? Truth, because he was God. That's why it was full of truth, because he was God. He was full of truth. So the source of real truth, biblical truth, to have a worldview is God himself. Jesus came as a demonstration of God. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because me and the Father are one. This is based, this seemed like salvation one-on-one. -on -one. But you know what? As I deal with children on a daily, calls from college, trying to figure out what's going on, why they're depressed, why they're going through what they're going through, I come right back to where view is off. And if I didn't do a good enough job back over in that gym when they worked out with me and sweating and when we sat down and they said, well, we, we glad to just be sitting down. Uh, we, we'll listen to you. And if their intentions weren't, I want to hear what you're saying with intention, then they walk away and by Christmas time, they've abandoned their faith. We got to be, we, we got to be intentional, everybody, about reaching the next generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we care that much about it going forth, if we love the kingdom that much, we want the kingdom to flourish for years and years and years and years. We want people getting saved and transformed and renewed and delivered for years to come. If not, I'm selfish. If not, I, I wear my badge. I wear my T-shirt. I'm one of God's children, but I don't care about it succession-wise being passed on to the next generation. Yep, I said it. This is a year of dominance. It's the year of domination for me. 56, I want to dominate in the pool pit. I want to dominate on the pavement. I want to dominate when ain't nobody looking at me or watching me. I want to dominate. And I want you to dominate too. But if we don't have the proper worldview of who God is, who man is in perspective of what God made you, right? And, and what is truth? What is really truth? God is the source of all truth. Amen. And knowledge. Next one is knowledge. Knowledge. We can know truth through what God revealed to man in the special revelation of what we look at every day is called the Bible. Amen. We can know truth. We can know truth through revelatory knowledge of the word of God, which is called the Bible. We can know truth through God's revealed word. God reveals himself in his word. Amen. So when you see Jesus turning two fish and five loaves of bread into food for everybody, 500 including women and children, 5,000 including women and children, you see God as a provider. When you see him healing the man at the pool of Bethesda, he's been laying there for 38 years. Amen. And he ain't got nobody to put him down there. He ain't got nothing but excuses for himself. When you see God healing him, you see God that heals. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. He said, follow me. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If you copycat off of me, what I did, you probably get the same results I got. Because when we had lack and deficit, I prayed to my daddy. I had two fish and five loaves of bread amongst all these people, but I took it, and I looked up, and I blessed it. Have you ever blessed something even when you got a little of it? Do you have to bless them when you got a lot? Most folk don't bless them until we got a lot. Because we don't trust. We don't trust it. Let's bless it when we got a little, knowing that God going to multiply it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. Let's look at John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What does that mean, sanctify? It means separ separ separation, right? The ability to separate. He, he told God to separate his disciples. This is what he told them first. Don't take them out of the world, but keep them in the world. But he said, separate them by your truth. truth. How separated are you? This is good for your worldview. How separated are you because of the truth? Because this world we live in today don't like truth. You'll find yourself out on the picnic table by yourself when everybody else is inside. You, you'll find yourself I, 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 sitting in the car, reading your Bible when everybody else is having a good time. Sanctify them through thy truth. Your word is true. So Jesus was saying, enrich them in your word. Like, 
like, like, you know, allow, allow the word in them to be their determining factor on every area of their life. Because what it's going to do, if they, if you sanctify them through your, through your truth, your word is true. The revelatory knowledge of the truth separates you from what's wrong. Right? So, so you, you wouldn't be in a situation you are in once the revealed knowledge comes and you obey what's been revealed. As it been saying to who to hang out with and who not to hang out with. You walk away from the things that's hurting you because the truth is separating you from what's hurting you. Because it's been revealed to you that God says, do this, go this way, go this way or do that. He says, sanctify them through thy truth. Amen. You know, the Bible says, uh, hmm, always be ready to give an answer. The world got a lot of answers. We don't have a lot of, we, we've got a lot of questions. We don't have a lot of answers, but God got all the answers. We don't have a lot of answers, but God got all the answers. Are you willing to not tuck tail and run and say what God says about everything? About marriage, about relationships, about logic, about math, about science. God got something to say about all of it. All of it. Amen. I mean, know that. Let's look at Romans 1 and 20. Romans 1 and 20. Watch what he says. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Right? So when you say the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. So we know that a house. It's made out of wood, but the wood comes from a tree, which God say in the Old Testament, he say on these just certain days, praise God, he created trees, livestock and everything. So it's going to take us right back to the garden. When you look at the stuff you see today, you know that it was God that created it. So you don't just look at this big, pretty, fancy house and think it's because this man got so much power and so much prestige that he can get a house like that. No, if you learn the craft of building a house, you can go down and cut enough lumber and you can make your own house. But if you don't build it on the solid rock, it's going to fall anyway, right? Watch this. Stay with me. He says, understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they're, they are without excuse. There's no excuse. There's, there, there, you can't look and think that there was a, a bang, right? And we have all this organization that we have. We have a body that has so many systems, skeletal system, preliminary system, central nervous system, skeletal system. We got all these systems in the body, all operating. They say there's billions of miles of, 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 of veins in your body. Millions of miles of veins in your body, all put together. You think, bang, and here we go, ooh, we've got a human being. Boom, ooh, here we go, we got architect. Boom, boom, look at that, look at all this stuff that we got. We got all these rivers and all these lakes. Man, we gotta be nuts to think that. Big bang. Yeah, it was a bang. Bang in the beginning. Bang. That's what happened. God created the heavens and the earth. People think it's stupid to sound like that because it's way elementary, man. But I'm telling you, we need to go back to the elementary things of the Bible to God being the creator and God being the ruler and God having dominion over this earth and creating you in his image and giving you power and dominion. Maybe we missed it somewhere. Maybe they did the devil so big and bad and destroying our family to keep our kids away. Man. Maybe that we missed it somewhere. Maybe we missed it somewhere in creation. In creation. Maybe we missed it at the Tower of Babel because we wanted to make our name great and we're going to rise and we're going to sit up. We're going to go up just like him. We didn't take notes from the chair. We didn't take, we didn't take notes from, 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 from Lucifer saying, I'm going to sit on the most high. I'm going to be like God and I'm going to do this. And God saying, you got out of here, buddy. It ain't but one of me up here. Tower of Babel. No, we're we, we going to build this and we're going to make it high. And God said, they said, let us make man in our image. Tower of Babel said, let us make a tower up to him. Third let us was, let us go down and confound their language. You can wait, you got beside yourself. Let us make man in our own image. Now us, let us return the favor to God. Now let's make a God in our own image. That's what the world trying to do. We trying to return the favor to God and make a God in our own image. A God that has these feelings and don't say nothing to hurt anybody. Don't say anything, man. You're negative. Negative is bad. Positive is good. 
Really? Negative is bad, positive is good. If I'll be negative if I'm telling you you can ready to kill yourself. Well, what do love look like then? If telling you what's right is hate, then what do love look like? Man, tell them kids, go home, call your children and say, I've been missing the mark. I haven't told you, you need to get yourself in church somewhere. You need to fall in love with Jesus because he's in love with you. He created you to do way more than you trying to struggle to do on your own. He got it all worked out for you. Check out his plan, son. Check out his plan, daughter. Man, I ain't holding back on this stuff no more. This stuff is real. God is real, man. The creator of this universe is real. You want to run your own world, go make one. God is in charge of this one. He's Elohim. He's large and he's in charge. Amen. I thank God for it. I thank God for it. God is doing what only God can do. Amen. He's doing what only, only God only God can do. So he, he says right there, he says uh, that even, even the hidden things, even the hidden things, is eternal power in the God hand so that they are without excuse. Let's look at um, Romans. Let's look at Psalms 9, 19. Psalm 19. It's gonna blow your mind here and watch this. Psalm 19. Because we gotta, we gotta, we gotta know what truth is. We gotta have a biblical view of truth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. What's that? You talking about creation? You talking about the, the firmament showeth his handiwork? The heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge he's talking about this knowledge there is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world in them has he set a tabernacle for the sun he's talking about about god and you're talking about his his knowledge it never ends it's a never end. It's an inexhaustible. People have been trying to figure out God. They say George Washington Carver said, give me the mysteries of the world. And he said, he seemed like he heard the spirit telling me, if I give you the mystery of the world, your head will blow up. I read this in a book called uh, Leadership by the Book. George Washington Carver said, forget it. Give me the mysteries of the peanut then. He known for making peanut butter. See how many inventions he did from the peanut butter. From the peanut, he had over 300 inventions. That's how inexhaustible God is. Mess around and ask him and mean it. Mess around and ask him and mean it. Ask him for some knowledge. I got a, brother, a book made called Brother Lawrence. I don't have it anymore. It was over 105 years old. And the book was, every time I turned the page, it would break. And in it, and I'm glad, sometimes God gave me a book just to read one passage out of a whole book. It come from the Underwoods, a book. And it was broken. I read that book. Brother Lawrence, he talked about, he looked outside his window one day and, 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 and he seen a leaf change on a tree, the color. And he said he went throughout his life trying to discover how did God do that? God's knowledge is, is far worth understanding. He went to his grave never understanding how he did, but he found out so much more about this world in his quest to find out something. The Bible says the secret things are unto God, but the things that are revealed are unto us and for our children's children. Right? There are some secrets. So the Bible suggests there's some things God ain't gonna never tell us. Deuteronomy 29, 29 is where it's found. The secret things go there. Go there. Deuteronomy. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Ain't that good? It's rich right there, man. He suggests some things I ain't gonna never tell you. But this brother Lawrence, he wanted to know how God changed this, this leaf. Have you ever been that intrigued by God? Something that he done, that it wasn't gonna bring you glory, it wasn't gonna get you a new house, wasn't gonna get you no more money, wasn't get you a new position, but it was just something that God did that just blew your mind and you wanted to find out. Let's get on a quest like that, y'all. Let's see how God can save a sinner like me. In that wretch of really discovering how God took an ex everything like me and saved me and called me to preach, that is mind blowing in itself. And if he can save me, he can save anybody. Amen. And if he has purpose for me, he got purpose for them. So I'm always a cheerleader of the underdog. 
Because I know God chooses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I know that for a fact. Let's go to Romans chapter 2. Talking about this knowledge. The knowledge is never ending, y'all. So we can know truth through God's reveal, what, what God has revealed to man in this special revelation, revelation called the Bible, as well as in the general revelation of his creation, like logic, math, science. We, we, all that stuff, we, we should refer us right to God. And we should say, this God, man can't do this. Look at all those pyramids, those ancient pyramids, man. They didn't have no forklifts, no cranes. No, mathematics, the mind of God. Just think about it. People back in those times, people lived a lot longer and things like that. They lived a lot longer. We've deteriorated. We've been devolving. We haven't been evolving. Bible says the outward man perish day by day, but the inner man is renewed. Amen. It's the inner man that's going towards heaven, being lifted up towards heaven. This old man is going towards the grave. Our outer man is going to the grave. Your inner man is going up. So we should be feeding our inner man so that it can be in constant correlation and, and constant, you know, uh, entry, constantly engaged in God. Romans chapter 2, verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Watch this. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Simple fact is, you got, and God made us, and he made us with an intrinsic knowledge of right and wrong. So when the Gentiles who don't even have the law do what's right, Right, and you that had, got the law, go against it. Basically saying, we know what we're doing. We know that there is a God. That knowledge. So if a man that don't know God, supposedly, can do not do the things that would affect or affect his relationship with God, how can you explain that? How can you explain that? When somebody that supposedly don't know the law of God is obeying the law of God, and those that know the law are disobeying Man, that's powerful, y'all. That's powerful, y'all. It's good stuff. Listen here, ain't no excuses, y'all. For me, there's no excuses for you. We've been empowered by the spirit of the truth and the living God to know what to do. And we've been empowered to be able to do it. It's up to us to do it. To have this proper worldview. We need this proper worldview, y'all. We got to have this right worldview. So we got God. In perspective, right? He created a ruler. We got man, we created in his image. We've been made to glorify him. We know truth will separate us and lead and guide us to do what is truth. Then we have knowledge, and this knowledge is applied truth. So we got knowledge. We're applying the truth that God has given us. It's separating us. Now we're walking a different, a, a different way than the course of the world because the world is going on the broad world road and we're going on this narrow road, right? So now ethics are, 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 are in the play. So now ethics, right? The absolutes, ethics are absolutes and are based on the unchanging word of God and the will of God. Let's go to Exodus. You know, we, we look at this and sometimes we think this thing changed, but it, it, it never has changed, everybody. It, it never has. Exodus chapter 20. And, and wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. You trying to take us back under the law? No, I ain't trying to take the Bible. Say the law is always good. Law is still good. Wait a minute now. We want to just take a break now and take recess because Jesus came and forgave us of all of our sins. Is, is, is it right now to commit sin? Is it right now to commit adultery? Is it right now to kill? Is it cool to, 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 to bear false witness? No, no. All those things because we love God. If you lo we love God and we want to do, Jesus said, if you love me, then we'll keep his commandment. Amen? Amen. He says that and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He has to remind us first. He had to remind us that what I'm getting ready to tell you. It's going to seem like it's a little rigid, a little strict. But guess what? I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. I brought you out of Egypt not to have the power to do what you want to do. Not to do what you want to do, but to do what you ought to do. Deliverance and freedom is not the power to do what we want to do, but it's the power to do what we ought to do. 
And what we ought to do is obey God. Amen. We, we, because it's going to be better. It's going to be better. Even if it's worse down here, it's going to be a lot better up here. Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Choosing and refusing. Refusing and choosing. We got to refuse some things and choose some stuff. He says, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. I say you should have no other God before me. We're talking about ethics now. We're talking about absolutes, right? You should not make of yourself any graved images or carved images and likenesses of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for the Lord your God is a jealous God. God am a jealous God. God, God said he's jealous, visiting the iniquities of the fathers on the children of the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my command. When the last time we read Exodus chapter 20 in our hearing at home and said, let's go back a little bit and peel back the pages and what was God like in the Old Testament? Because the Bible said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. He's the same God. He's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's just keep reading. He says, showing steadfast love to a thousand of those who love me and keep my commandment. You shall not take the Noah's name, your God, in vain. For the Lord would not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Did God stop saying that? Did he, is, he, is, is this is this not a plan anymore? No, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Praise God. On the Sabbath day, Sabbath day is actually Saturday. Amen. Praise God. I'm asking myself, am I keeping the Sabbath day holy? Am I refraining? He said, Don't you don't do nothing, don't let your kids do nothing either. Praise God. A lot of people still acknowledge the Sabbath day. Sabbath day events. That's what they acknowledge the 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 the, the sixth, the Sabbath day. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath unto the Lord. On it you shall not do any work or your sons or your daughters, your male servants or your female servants or your livestock or your sojourners who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and seas and all of them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Honor your mother and your father. We go back to that. You know, you, you your kids, you, we're not your friends. I, I'm your parent. And, and no, we're not going, we, we, we're not having playtime together. We we having family time. And family time say that the, the man is ahead of the woman and, and Christ is ahead of, of, of the man and, and God is ahead of, of, of Christ. That there's, there's an order, amen, if the man is not there, and you know, mom, you know God's going to empower you to do what's necessary to be done in that household. He's going he's gonna to give you the necessary tools. Praise God. He knows that because of sin, marriage ain't the way it's supposed to be. Amen. But the, that woman that decides I'm going to follow Christ and I'm going to trust him to be my provider, they still going to have money for those kids. He's still going to provide pampers. He's still going to because he's God. And if he tell you not to do something or not to compromise, then he has to have what you need to prevent you from compromise. That's God. That's the God we serve. Amen. We ain't got to compromise, man. Take no, will it come lately? We ain't got to take that. No, you're going you're gonna to take God at his word and we're going to trust him. Amen. Honor your mother and father. We tell our kids, you both honor me, not because, not, not because I'm your mama and just because, well, because I'm your mama. That's, that's, that's a lie. But, 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 yeah, because of that, because I'm your mama <laughs> or because I'm, I'm, I'm your dad. But what I'm trying to say, you know, like this position, like, like I, I'm your mama and I'm not, I'm not trying to live right. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm still your mom. Okay. So you still supposed to honor your mother and father, whether they do what they supposed to or not. You're still supposed to, but when you're walking God's word out and you loving God and keeping his commandment, God will come and back. What you tell them. God told me, tell you, you supposed to honor me, girl, because the Bible says your days can be short. We don't want to tell them that. I don't want to them to my baby, but you're crying day and night about your baby. Let God deal with him. He loves you more than your baby. He loves you more than you love your baby. And he can make things and make it things very uncomfortable to them until they come to the Lord. We always want to be sweet, want to be in our feelings. We got that counterfeit worldview. 
And we seeing who God is through our feelings. He's a loving God. Everything goes, everything don't go. God have orchestrated marriage and what it should be. To a man and a woman, he's orchestrated that. Praise God, he said what should be and what should not be in his word. So when you say it, you ain't trying to get on nobody. If they come back with you and tell you that you got a sin in your life, say you're absolutely right. Let's pray about mine and let's pray about yours. Let's get it done right now. That's if we're going to change the world. If that ain't the case, if God is not the authoritative word in this earth, then we ain't standing on nothing. But if we standing on the word, we standing on everything. Amen. Honor your mother and father. Let your days, let me get off of this. I'm going to mess that up. Honor your mother and your father. Honor them exactly what it means. That your days may be long in the land that, that, that the Lord your God has given you. Don't, don't murder nobody. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not covet your neighbor's house. You got a nice house, but there's another nice house. Don't covet their house. Because when you begin to covet, jealousy and envy come in. Why does God tell you not to covet? That's truth chasing. You ask, why does God say, don't steal? Principle, don't steal, right? The precept is don't steal. The principle is because stealing is dishonest. And an honest God told you not to steal. So you can truth trace from the principle to the precept back to the person. So you look at God's word. And you can find out, did God really say it? If it leads back to him, his character is honest, his character is love, his character is immutable, his character is, is love, his patience, his kindness. So that's how we truth chase. Don't cover your neighbor's house. You should not cover your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or, any, or anything that is your neighbor's. Don't cover it. God said he'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Why are we going to cover it? Amen? Amen. So we have to see God through a biblical worldview. We have to see man through a biblical worldview. We have to know truth through the Bible. It gives us truth. God is the express, Christ was the express image of truth. We have to know knowledge, how to apply what we say is true. And we have to have ethics. That's how we walk it out. Amen. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 17, and 18, watch this, this is a powerful scripture because you're talking about am I still living in the law? Watch this, Jesus says, I do not think that I come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come to abolish them, but to fear, fulfill them. I didn't come to abolish them to say that they don't mean nothing no more. I came to fulfill them, for truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Jesus still got to come back. Amen. So we still supposed to be obeying God's law. Amen. Amen. We still supposed to be obeying. Is it salvanic? Is it, is it, is, can you get, be saved? Is, is it a means of salvation? It's not salvanic in nature. No, the law can't save you. But praise God. Save folks. Keep God's law. Amen. And walk in God's ways. Praise God. Amen. God, I just thank you. There's a few names that came up to me. Uh, I was riding in today. Uh, Mr. Newkirk. Uh, he's having, God, first of all, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've taught us tonight, Lord God, about having a biblical worldview. Lord God, when it comes to man, when it comes to God, when it comes to truth, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to ethics, Lord God, we just thank you. God, I thank you for returning me home safely in the last two weeks. I thank you for Minister uh, Shea, God. I thank you for Minister Gillespie, Lord God, and, and their, their work to keep the to keep the flow of God moving in this sanctuary. Thanks for all the members that continue to sow into in to this to this ministry with their attendance, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in this ministry. God, I thank you for Mr. Newkirk, Lord God, who is a member, Lord God. I I, I just ask for forgiveness, Lord God, of being more more intentional, Lord God, with our, our elders, because they are, they are like children. They're, they're like children, Lord God, and, and, and they, need, they need to be seen. And, and I have been focusing on the young, young God and, and forgetting the older that are seemingly young too. God, forgive me in, in my uh, busyness, Lord God, to not be sensitive to your spirit and to your people in the name of Jesus. I looked up uh, Mr. Newkirk on today, Lord God, in the name of, of Jesus Christ, I have a surgery tomorrow, 34th surgery. God, we ask that you, just by the ability to say that, mean you've been good to him. <laughs> 34 surgery, God, those people will be gone. God bless your name for Mr. Newkirk. God bless him in the name of Jesus Christ. Ms. Mabel Bird, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift her up. 
before you in the mighty name of the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, God, to heal her and in her body, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Ernestine Tillman, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, uh, Miss Tillman. Uh, I just pray in, in Jesus' name that you heal her and touch her body whole in the master's name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord God. I, I thank you that you are a healer. I pray for Mother Patton in, in Jesus' name, God. I fix her, God. Fix her, deal with her on the inside in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, God. I pray for Joyce Gaston and, 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 and Brother Ray Gaston in the master's name of Yeshua, um, that you heal their bodies from the inside out their minds and their hearts. I pray for Sister Lynn, Lord God. I pray for Sister Sandy, Lord God, in the matchless name of Yeshua, King of King and Lord of Lords, God. And, and, and those are the names you, you brought to my mind, God. I just pray that you bless all those mothers and those brothers, Lord God, in the name of Yeshua, God. Heal and, and, and set free even from things that may be holding them up in their minds. In the mighty name of Yeshua, King of King, God, because deliverance comes through revelation. So give them revelation that you are a healer and God, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think according to the power that works in us. Release their faith. Release their faith in you, God. It's in Yeshua's mighty name we pray and thank you. Amen.